Hello. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you are. What's up, Jimbo? Doing? How's everybody doing? Right. We are back with some more mini sculpting. Oh yeah. Let me just finish getting set up here real quick. And <clears throat> okay, that's good. Those are All right, what's up? Uh, so the last time we were here, we started working on, uh, or we continued working on this uh, this mini here, which is a um, Dungeons and Dragons version um, called a space hamster. The space hamsters are um, beasts of burden used used in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, client that I have wants me to sculpt eight of these guys <coughs> uh, the the uh, the catch with these guys is that they've been taken over by uh, elithid worms so they are elithid <laughs> mind flare uh, space hamsters for Dungeons and Dragons these guys typically are uh, about the size of grizzly bears and they're typically used for beasts of burden in Dungeons and Dragons, so that's kind of the idea behind this guy. You want to uh, go back and watch the last stream. It is on the Pitch Pixelogic um, YouTube channel, the ZBrush YouTube channel, under the live find previous stream there. Uh, so we did some work, and then I did some work off stream on this guy to get him kind of a little bit further so uh last stream we worked on the tentacles so um, i left one of them to show how i did those at the beginning of this stream and then we'll just start <coughs> excuse me we'll just start piecing together everything else got a couple ideas i want to do um some dynamics uh with a with a big kind of blanket cloth over some of these shapes and then throw some ropes over them, and then we'll work on some more straps and stuff as well. But yeah, these are uh, giant tentacle mouth hamsters that will eat your face off from Dungeons and Dragons. Um, this one down here, I'll sh throw a little shout out to uh, Flesh of Gods. This is their merchant um, from Flesh of Gods. This guy's awesome, but I wanted to give just kind of a, a size comparison so i did not sculpt this this is by gods negative 20 decibels i was i was at negative 20 then you can turn it up check how's that is that better too loud too soft should i speak louder or deeper <laughs> all right so let's get rolling um, I'm going to quickly do this tentacle real quick and uh, show you how I did the other one. So this one, we just divided up a couple of times. <coughs> I also got to apologize, I'm getting over a cough, so I have to mute and cough off stream. Um. So let's divide it one more time. That should be good enough. I think these ones. All right, so the first step was to use some dam standard and map out the outer and inner. So the, the kind of the bisecting part here. So I want the outer part uh, of the mouth to have this top section. 
So we'll start kind of just mapping out how I want that to wrap around. I think I may need to go one more. I'm just going to kind of figure out how I want to wrap this. So we see the outside of this one, the outside of this one, the inside of this one. So maybe we'll see the inside of this one. So maybe we'll have this kind of wrap around this way so that it exposed the bottom side to the front. All right, so now that I have that one done, I can start to, what? Because I have lazy mouse on. There we go. So now I'm just gonna make a couple of marks here. So this one is at about here. And then it turns in this way. I'm gonna go right about like that. Okay. Um, this. All right, let's see if that feels about right. Just map the rest of this out. And I'm being real loosey goosey with this to just kind of give that nice broken up organic shape flavor. All right, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. So from this side here, we'll see the outer and the inner, which is nice. Here we have a nice, it's about, it's a bit halfway, which is, it's not the end of the world. It's only halfway from about this. I'm looking at this shape versus this shape. And from this angle, it's about halfway, but it really goes to one third, two thirds pretty quickly, which I'm okay with. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so then we do the outside. Just take uh, our standard brush here. Just need some more intensity. Just start. Probably even more. Looks a little too not 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 enough. Smaller and more powerful. Because you really got to make sure that your viewing distance is, um, like you're you're playing to your viewing distance. So for miniatures. You know, this guy is probably about <coughs> three inches tall. So if he's on the table, he's probably going to look something like, like this. So you really want to make sure that whatever details that you put in there really stand out and uh, make a mark from your, you know, 90% viewing distance. Probably want to do it even more here. Actually, feels like that's not quite it halfway. Yeah, it's about halfway. All right. All right. So make it just a little bit bigger. Let's just do a couple of tests here. Here that looks like. So that's reading better. 
start to see a little bit of the shapes. It's echoing here. Should echo maybe a little bit stronger on this guy too. Thinking maybe. Could push it even further. Just so we're getting some nice lights and darks in there. Because really, we want to also, when you're doing minis, you want to sculpt for the painter. Um, so when you're doing this, think about giving the ink um, or the pigment places that it can settle and um, peaks that it you can have nice um, transitions on. What's up, Nadira? How's it going? Getting super lumpy, though, which is I'm not liking it. Because I, I think it's because I had Lazy Mouse on. It does some, some weird stuff. Oh, I want it to be a little... There we go. That's a little bit. We'll just kind of haphazardly throw stuff in here to give it more of that nice organic feel. What I can do too is if I don't like something, um, I can actually set a uh, st uh, store morph target. And then if I'm coming in here and doing stuff like this, You know, and I don't like some of these things that are happening in here. I can go to my morph brush and just start pulling back some of that. Just take off RGB, throw my intensity down a little bit, and then just start pulling it out a little bit. It's not really working how I want it to, so. Sometimes it takes a couple of times to do, which is fine. <coughs> What's up, Lord Luigi? How you doing? All right, let's go back to standard. And then, yep, that's fine. Maybe we'll just be a little bit more deliberate here. I think it's also fine that we have like some, you know, those little pieces. You know, maybe a lazy mouse will be better. Let's try. Let's just maybe turn the intensity up higher. It's a little bumpy though, which we can smooth out, which is fine. I don't like that very much. Just be a little bit lighter. Density down just a touch. Okay, so something like that. All right, we're getting this nice kind of repeating pattern. Good. Now, now I can go back and say, well, you know, maybe, maybe I want these to be a little bit wider spread. Just kind of start easing these one way or the other, just to make sure that the overall presence feels good. I 
thing I'm not really enjoying right now is that this line here and this line here feel a little too parallel for me. I'm thinking maybe if I pull it this way, do something more like that then this curve and this curve is not so parallel i'm just trying to make sure that in <coughs> in the round that things are looking interesting from all views the other thing about this one is this feels a little bit too straight here maybe i'll just pull give that a little bit more of a curve there so now it's there's no straight line there, which is what I like. Okay, yeah, that feels pretty good. Here we got a nice little mix. Um, so on this one, we decided to see what it was like to flare out the end. I don't, I don't, I'm not really feeling it. So just put that back. Let's see if we can get, let's just get rid of that. Not feeling it, not feeling it, man. Yeah, so the other thing I do, <coughs> excuse me, quite a bit is, you know, when I'm trying to just grab the, the edge here and I'm trying to just barely grab it and then pull it in, but a lot of times you're just catching the background and rotating. So <coughs> I keep camera lock on a um, shortcut. So I use it as uh, shift C. <coughs> so if I camera lock it, then I can't, whenever I grab it, it's not gonna move. So then now I can just say, oh, I could really nice and easily grab that edge, that silhouette, unlock it, move it, lock it again. And just grab the silhouette. Super helpful. I use that all the time. Shift C. Right, and then just for printing purposes, for the fact of the matter that this is going to be a physical model and I don't want it to have ends that are too brittle, I'm going to purposefully leave the ends not crazy skinny. Gonna clean this stuff up just a bit. So during printing, probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the tentacles and this kind of connective tissue and uh, key it to the inside of the mouth. That way, um, it's not, you're not gonna be pulling supports from all these pieces. Uh, it'll probably end up printed more like this, like straight down, uh, maybe not that like that, but maybe more. like this. So if the, the bottom was here and all the supports come up this way, uh, then I can print that piece separately. And I don't have to, if something misprints or gets broken, I can always just reprint this piece um, and then replace it in the key in the inside of the mouth. Okay, let's do the underside of this one real quick. Let's see what we did. Uh, I think we used just the alpha. We used, so I think we did standard and then we used the alpha 60. I think we used drag rack. Just uh, sub. Yep, that's what we did. Maybe not so high. Let's grab this dude. Just down just a bit.
this is, I don't think this is the final look, but it's something to get the idea across or come and refine some of this stuff later. As always, if you guys have any questions at all and are here during our live stream and not watching this replay on YouTube, more than welcome to jump into chat and ask questions about how I did any of it. Okay, and let's get a little bit more definition through the bisection. I found uh, sculpting for miniature printing so liberating in terms of what you can get away with uh, in your sculpts. Um, I come from a, a character art for video games background, and there's so much that you, technical stuff that you have to figure out during the production of video game character assets that <coughs> just don't need to worry about here because... Everything basically gets um, baked down into one piece for the um, for the three D print. You can really get away with quite a lot. Um, I'll have to worry about uh, sculpting for a good material balance um, or rigging. Interpenetration is not an issue. Okay, I think that's okay for right now. Matches the tone of all the other ones. Like if you look at if you look at this case, so one of my favorite things too is like it, you know buying the STLs from some of these like Patreons and and uh, my mini factory tribes, and just looking at how they construct something. So like so really, the power of this guy is back here, right? You're really just you're seeing all these nice cool. <coughs> shapes that tell a story but once you and this guy is like I don't know he's only like he's a 28 millimeter base so he's only about an inch or so tall uh, do you ever use Nomad Sculpt? I don't uh, but I really want to actually uh, that's the iPad one right? really? Um, I think I bought it and I just haven't had time to actually sit down and learn it. Uh, but I've messed around with it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now that uh, ZBrush has announced that they're working on an iPad version, I don't know if I'll ever need to. <laughs> Which I'm really excited about. Uh, but like, as you, as you like zoom into this actual model, things... Things become very apparent during the production um, of this. Like, look how thick this uh, strap is. Like, it's it's friggin' massive. It's almost a, a cube, extruded cube. Um, like, the, uh, the hair, uh, in particular, like, these pieces here, like, there's no undercut to these at all. They just, they literally just go back into it. Like, if you look at the... Um, how they decimated everything like it's all it's all connected it's all just right into each other and you don't have to worry about having like all these super duper clean edges and stuff back in there uh and this is the actual print model this is what i one i actually printed um i don't have them anymore because i gave them to I gave them away but you see like you don't have to do all that crazy little detail like everything just kind of gets put together as long as your your reads from distance are correct that's what matters right so like when you come into these bottles you know from out here like wow that's a lot of holy cow that's a lot of detail but really it's not the surface detail that's important it's the amount of like depth of of things so you know this plane out here to this plane in here you know 
how far this piece comes out from from this so like things are like extruded out quite a bit and even the um the uh the complicated looking um shirt when you look at it you're like wow that's actually not really that complicated at all like the the, the sculpt is not crazy minute detail kind of thing even if you look at the um like the arrows back here like the arrows are like the shafts are super thick because they need to get printed like even um you know when i printed this this piece here was super flimsy and then from here up was super flimsy as well not flimsy but like it actually broke because it was pretty thin um but yeah like the buckles and stuff like they're super duper thick um and everything is a lot simpler close up so that's the kind of the freedom of um of 3d print is that you can just you don't have to get so crazy detailed even this stuff down in here when you look out here you're like wow that's that's crazy like that's a lot of little detail but then you look at it up close and it's basically just a bunch of primitives put together like even the keys but again like you're seeing those keys from about this size so it's really liberating when it comes to like how much detail do you need to do so i'm looking at this guy and going like oh yeah these shoulder pads are like way too thin like they probably should be All right. that i think i can do Uh, so let's delete higher real quick and grab poly group. Now let's just make that quite a bit thicker. And then maybe we'll do a um, a bevel on this. So we'll do bevel edge loop complete. Just oops, maybe we'll do edge loop partial. There we go. We'll do something like that, and then this guy will actually bring out more like that you're really seeing more of the the silhouette break which is much more powerful than it actually was a minute ago right poly count doesn't really matter when you're printing uh, as long as it's not crazy high so like what i <coughs> what i tend to do is i look at like how many sub tools each um each part is that somebody has already manufactured so this guy is all one print. He doesn't come. Uh, oh, sorry. the The base is separate from the um, the body, but the body is all one print. But if you if you look, at, uh, you can see from that there. But if you look at this guy, he's only hundred and fifty thousand polygons. Is that right? No, one point five million, which is not much. I think um, for each sub tool or like a piece that you're going to print, I'd probably stick <coughs> somewhere between, you know, upwards of two or three million, maybe for each piece that you're printing. Or around there. But like you can see, this guy has plenty of detail. And it's minus this, all, all of this too, so... Decimation Master is your friend. Okay. Actually, maybe we'll, while we're on this, turn that one off. Let's duplicate this guy and just see what it looks like. This thicker, the quicker, thicker picker upper. Yeah, about 1.5 minutes. But I think they could have gotten even down <coughs> even further um, because these ropes, like if you look at the ropes on this guy, they're, they are they got a ton. Like look at all that geo in there. I don't know if you can get much lower than that, um, but there's a ton of geo in there. And there's a ton of geo in, in here as well too. But um, great ways to do it is just, you know, uh, take 
you know, 20 bucks or so, 30 bucks, and um, go to find some great Patreons for 10 bucks a month and um, buy their STLs and look at them, study them, see how they're doing it. So, like, for me, I, I, I do um, Arch Villain uh, that are uh, amazing. BCRM games is amazing. Um, Flesh of Gods is great. Uh, they do mostly 32 and 28 millimeter um, work, uh, but uh, Witch Song is actually the other one. They do amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, that's probably my favorite one right now is Witch Song. Uh, can you please give us tips for making sculpts watertight shapes? Best way to combine. <clears throat> yeah, it's super easy. All you have to do is decimate it. I'm not decimate it, but uh, dynamesh it. So once you dynamesh anything, it'll make it a closed uh, shape. So let's say if I want to make this and this and the arm like a closed piece, what I would do is, uh, let me just shape this real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Try not to cough in your guys' ear. I Getting over a, a cold for the last few weeks. So let's say we got this. All right, so we're going to, let's duplicate this guy. Duplicate, send him all the way down to the bottom. Grab him, duplicate, send him all the way to the bottom. Grab this guy, duplicate, send all the way to the bottom. Um, so now what I want to do is I grab uh, this guy. And I'm just going to, that looks awesome. <laughs> Uh, let's, let's say, let's get rid of all of this, all right? So we do delete hidden. So let's say that you have, uh, an open mesh like this, get rid of that. And this is going to close. Let's just do, let's say, let's say you have that. Um, so all you have to do is just, uh, dynamesh it, dot, dynamesh it, oh, delete hidden, dynamesh. So that will close any holes like this. Um, and that would just make sure that you clean up any edges because you'll end up getting weird things happening. So maybe we'll do that, delete hidden, dynamesh, close that like this. All right, so then we'll take this guy here. Um, we will make sure he doesn't have any. Okay, so then we'll do merge down. Fine, merge down. All right, so you got these three pieces that are separate pieces. Um, so all you have to do is um, dynamesh them like that. All right now it's now it's all one piece, but you want to make sure that you dynamesh at a high enough resolution. All right, so like maybe like this. All right, and then you may have to go through before you do dynamesh and like fill a bunch of spots and stuff. So like, there's there's plenty of times when you'll need to like maybe we'll do like an insert mesh and then we'll or we can. Auto groups. Hide this guy. And then maybe what I'll do is I'll just kind of pull this guy up like that. Something like that. So then now when you dynamesh him, he doesn't have that grossness stuff in there. All right. So then once you have this, it's a watertight mesh. You may want to go back in and like use um, uh, um, Sculptors Pro and you can come in, you know, do maybe. A little bit of cleanup on some of the edges if you want to. Like that. <coughs> and then to get this down to a decent uh, size, you just go to Decimation Master, pre-process it, and then I would say do it by 20%, and then boom, there you go. It holds all of your detail. You have everything. Everything is watertight. That piece is ready to print. Obviously, you want to clean it up as much as you want to, but that's exactly how they did 
uh, this. When you look at all of these pieces together, um, they they probably decimated them separately first, and then, uh, or maybe not. I don't know. A little hard to tell at some pot spots, but put everything together, dynameshed it, and then um, decimated. So it's watertight. Yeah, the hollow for the hollow parts, like you'd have to um, grab this guy. What I usually do is I make sure that I have double on, and then I'll just hide parts of the mesh like this, and just make sure that there's no like crazy like this stuff in here. You could probably just come in and let's turn off that. Yeah, you could. Just smooth some of this stuff out so you can look inside of these things and, and kind of clean those up a little bit so but I usually do it from the inside like this because it's much easier to see so that if you do it this way you're like oh yeah they got this whole piece in here um, that I'm I probably don't need right so I can like build up some of this stuff uh, and then just redo it real quick so if I come back uh, all the way back here Oh my gosh. That thank you. And maybe what I'll come doing is I'll just build up some of this. But this is like all kind of like pre print production stuff. Um after the sculpt is is done, you know? Right, because you're never gonna see that underneath there. You might as well just do it like that. Re dynamesh it. Reprocess. Decimate current. Decimate. Right now when I do this, we have something much more, much less obtrusive. I can just kind of clean that up just a little bit. But I'll go through, I'll usually go through my model and and just make sure that I don't have any weird things in there. And then that, there you go, that's ready to print you know, do your keys and everything like that, but then, that, or at least that's how I do it. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so, <coughs> hold on just a second. Okay, <clears throat> I'm back. Um, so uh, I think I'm gonna show you guys how I did the the belts real quick. So I'm gonna try maybe running another one across the top just to add a little bit more interest here. So um, I have a good brush. Uh, where did I put that? It's not there. I think it's actually insert brush. This one? Brush. Insert. Where did I find this one? Where did I put that? Um, brush real quick. Cool. Hello. Uh oh. I better save it. It's not being ha it's not being happy right now. Uh another question, if I may, absolutely. Uh, I merged multiple subtools, then remesh by union, uh, but had issues doing that. However, it was one at a time subtool works. Okay. They were to do it all at once. I haven't really used merge uh, remesh by union, so I can't can't say. Unfortunately. 
<coughs> but that's a good that's a good way to explore it. I may try that actually. Thanks for the suggestion. Why is my light box? There we go. Um, was it in ZBrush testers? Nope. Maybe it's in my third party. Did I get? In this. Huh. Okay, well, I can't find that brush. Of course, now that I'm streaming. Uh, is there no. Uh, if you're looking for great brushes and lots of great brushes, uh, I would suggest XMD. Uh, he's got a lot of great. Great brushes. This one, I think. That's a JPEG. That's this. Yeah, this one. Other straps by CXYDA. If you want to find that one, I don't know where that uh, where I got it from, <laughs> uh, but that's the name of it. Straps by six. Sixty da. Uh, but this one is great because it has all of these different straps. Uh, so if I grab this guy, let me just show you the straps that are awesome. Like that, that's perfect to start from. Absolutely perfect. So there's that one. There's that one. There's a circle on the end. There's just a plain version, which is the one I'm going to use. Uh, but then there's like buckles and stuff. This this one's awesome. <coughs> so that's what I did with these guys. So I'm going to try, let's see if we can just... <coughs> Man. I'm sorry if that's super duper loud in your guys' ear. See if we can get this... Thinking maybe 45 is a good size. That's about the size I use for the other one. Maybe it's 50. Yeah, it's 50. All right, so let's see if we can just get. Um, you can use your depth, and this one is uh, for brush placement. It's under brush depth, brush placement. I use that quite a bit. So I pull it out onto my UI. All right, so I get it to about something like this, and then I, I just grab and drag one side and then the other, and it usually uh, tries to kind of fix all of this around. So, um... I'm gonna go to stroke. Stroke, there it is. Um, modifiers, sorry, curve, and then I'm gonna make sure that I put on bend end as well. Uh, that way I can change both sides of this curve. I'm gonna see if I can get it come down about like that add just a little bit more visual interest and get it to a point where I'm happy with the overall arch of it uh, and then I can kind of edit the ends here I'm actually thinking I may need a I may need it just a little bit longer, so we'll try bring it down there. Bring this guy here and see if we can add just one more click. Sometimes it's a little too much. 
All right, so then now the back of it is doing this kind of weird thing. Um, and the way I get around that is just pull one end. And it usually will snap. There we go. Um, but before I do that, let's go back to here. Because it's sitting off the skin just a little bit. So maybe what I'll do is I'll put the embed down just a little. Too high. One. <coughs> I think I can work with that. All right, so let's try that. So then what I'll do is I'll just grab this side there. Before I do that, I want to split unmasked points. That way this piece will now be in a separate sub tool. Just mask this side off, flip the mask, and blur the mask a little bit. So that's all masked on that side. This one I'm going to put a uh, move tool down here, and then we'll just see if we can kind of scoot this guy ever so slightly towards the wanted destination. You have reached your destination. Let it save. And then um, we'll redo the mask about here. Flip it. Do one or two, maybe just one blur. We'll just inch it ever so slightly towards where I want it to be. Now, I got to be careful here because I'm going to create a lot of um, a lot of room underneath his skin, like the between here and here, and that may get broken kind of easily. So, what I want to do is I want to make sure that this thing is probably quite a bit thicker, mostly because if I'm looking at it. It doesn't have a lot of value in terms of silhouette breakup. It only has, you know, when you paint it, it'll have graphic breakup. <coughs> so I want to make sure that they stand out quite a bit more. So what I could do oops, is grab this guy. Oops. And how, so how do I make all of this thicker? Let's do auto groups. And I don't want to affect the little... Um, thingamabobs here. So I'm just going to split those off into their own ones. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Z modeler tool and I'm going to use QMesh poly loop. Now, well actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to do group by normals. <coughs> so that'll give me normals for Pretty much every 45 de degree angle is what that's going to give me. Because it's on 45 is the tolerance. So now what I can do is I can go QMesh polygroup all. And then when I do a QMesh on this, it's only going to do that polygroup, right? But I don't necessarily want to do another edge loop. So I'm going to hold down shift. And then that will give me just a, an overall thickness boost the outside of it, like that. So I will see that's good. Take a look at that. Eyeballs are quick. Hey, I mean, you could definitely see that better. It just feels a little too thin this way. So you, you could do the same thing to make it wider. Instead of trying to move everything by hand, you could say, all right, give me this poly group and do the same thing, right? You're just Q meshing and holding down um, face bar. I mean, I'm sorry, shift. Then you do it to the side too. Shift. 
Look at that. that. If that ain't magic, I don't know what is. Uh, advice for chain mail? Yes. Use, um, yes. Use micro detail, uh, micro, uh, micro mesh in geometry. It's a, a dynamic subdivision. Use micro poly. And then when you're done with that, um, hit apply and it'll make, uh, all right. So let's say, all right, you do, 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 let's say you need something flat ish. All right, let's do this. What I would do for it is uh, let's append in Let's I don't see him. Fine. Grab this guy. So let's say I want to make a um a chain mail piece that kind of hangs uh from here. So I make some just some straight geo like this. <coughs> um and then I would make sure that whatever shape you want uh the like the plane to be. Um, and you can do this on complicated pieces as well, but I'll do it on this just to prove the point here. So, um, so you got the overall shape that you want, right? It's kind of a little bit oblong like that. What I would do is I would Z remesh it real quick, uh, to get even mesh in there. So I like 20 by 20 for, um, adaptive size and curve strength. And let's do double for now and then do Z remesh. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to do detect edges. Should keep each one of those, which is not. So maybe we'll maybe we'll just keep the front. How about that? We'll just keep that front piece. Let's do um, before we do that. Let's duplicate this whole thing. Though. Duplicate sub tool. Duplicate to save it. So we'll just say delete hidden. All right now I just have this piece. Like that. All right, so that's going to be my overall piece. And then let's zero mesh it to get some even geometry in there. And then I can even do um, alt smooth. So if I hold down shift to smooth, I place my pen down and then I lift up on shift. I can um, use this alt smooth and what that does is it tries to keep the overall volume of everything but just normalizes the distance between all of your vertexes here so then now i have some good even geometry in there so i go to um dynamic subdiv <coughs> one thing quick is if you do a subdivision on something that doesn't have any creases you'll lose the border so in order to fix that you just do Crease by polygroups to put a crease around the entire thing. Then when you divide, you don't lose the overall um, uh, volume of your out, uh, outside. So I usually do that, and then I turn on dynamic. And then down here, I'm going to turn on micro poly, and then go down to the um, whichever one it is. Say, oh, is there one in here? Something like that. All right. So basically, what that's doing is it's cre it's it's saying for every um, every one of these uh, planes, uh, we're going to put in one of those repeating patterns. So let's say let's align everything. Let's make sure they're welded. That's fine. Doesn't matter. So then we got this, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So when that's done, so these are all instants right now. So when you're done, if you hit apply, then that actually makes the real geo for you. And it's on this like nice rotated, you know, the plane that you wanted to, to be in. Uh, so then I would go through and let's do auto groups real quick and just get rid of these extra pieces. All right. 
go through and, and delete all those pieces. I'm not going to do all of them. Uh, but then what I would do is now you need some kind of backing for this, right? Because you don't necessarily want all of those holes in your print because that's going to be a nightmare to print, a nightmare to clean, a nightmare to not break. So now that I have this older piece in here, I can actually um, use this piece. So let's grab this guy. Um, let's duplicate him one more time. I'm going to fill in a bunch of those holes in there. So let's delete. Delete hidden. Actually, you know what? Instead of doing that, I'm going to go back to this. We're going to duplicate from here. So duplicate that guy. Because I want to save this, this exact mesh there. Um, We'll go back to geometry, turn micro poly back on. We'll hit apply. Okay, cool. Align. Apply. All right, so now I have the piece that's behind it. Um, and then the, the pieces that will be kind of coming off of that. So now what I can do is grab this guy and just move him back just a little bit. And because it's the same, um, it's the same plane that it was created from. All I have to do is is just move it back a little bit, and it should just pull on just on the underside of these rings. And then I can uh, extrude this guy. Let's go to <coughs> uh, Z modeler brush, and then I'm going to. So Q mesh poly group all, and this is going to be inside out because I'm going to do it backwards like this. But I want to establish that thickness of of that piece. Just make sure. So if I turn off double, it's inside out. So just hit flip. And now you have, uh, and then you can you know. Uh, let's grab that. I know. Divide that a couple of times, and then you can just kind of sculpty sculpty this part. Right, and then you can say, um, maybe we'll do inflate. All right, and you got this. Because the thing about chain mail is that. You don't want to kill yourself on um, having all these holes and everything. So I typically will do my chain mail like on a plane or against something so that um, when you when you print it, it's only it has something to, to live against, but still gives you the idea that that's chain mail. That's usually how I do chain. If I have a but typically that's how it. Something like that. But you may want to find a, a different, um, you know, not this exact one, because it's not really chain milly, but you find the right pattern that you want, and then just do it that way. Hopefully that's up. that helps. All right. <clears throat> Uh, and how do you do retopology on that? Oh, well, since this is for print, we don't worry about retopology. Um, you would just decimate it. All right, so if you want to do that to that piece together, like if you want to get that piece ready for print, then you would... Um, this guy and this guy. You 
you would say, all right, let's put that all the way down to the bottom. Grab this guy, put him all the way down to the bottom. <coughs> I would do a um, pretty high dynamesh on this guy. 5112, let's see what that looks like. Maybe 1024. There you go, something like that, right? And then you say, I grab this piece, and then let's merge down, and then you do um, another 1024 on this one. And then you Dynamesh those two together. Right, so now you have all one watertight piece. And then you do Decimation Master, you process. Decimate current. And then there you go. That's your printable. Right, still looks like mesh. Oh, if it were game ready thing, uh, it'd be much different. You would probably do that in the material. You just bake, yeah, you would bake all this information into basically this plane that lives behind it. And then you would make sure that you would, you would have like borders on this uh, that would kind of cover up um, the ends. Like if you look at um, Geralt's uh, armor in Witcher 3, like he has some really nice uh, chain mail on his shoulders, shoulder pieces. Uh, but you'll notice that uh, they all have borders on them. So like all of that information like lives inside of what these borders are. So that when you move it around, it looks like it has depth. But then as soon as you get to this, like you see the, the ribbing on either side. It lives all in the material. You just bake it. Bake it. Okay. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Let's grab this guy. Let's get him into position here. So let's maybe just kind of see if we can start nudging this down. Got to pull. So when I'm doing um, nudges uh, like this on things that are uh, low poly or just in general, I don't ever take it one time and move it because what's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of major stretching. So the way I've, the, the quick way around that I found is just do nudges, many, many different nudges. So if I say grab here and nudge, grab here and nudge, grab there, and you're just kind of like, moving things around just by gentle nudges it tends to kind of even out really nicely uh the the geo you don't have a lot of crazy weird stretching um there could be ways to to retain the the geo uh, but it's really i think it's really dependent on the piece that you're trying to go for there's definitely ways to do it um you know, you could, if there, if it's something very specific, you could get down and say, <coughs> Z-remesh that piece, um, and then just keep, like, the top edges of uh, the... If you're going to do this as a game mesh and you want to retain some of this, some of this info, um, you can just... Right, so you keep this as your high model, high poly model, and then for your low poly, you could um, you could almost just see how would I do that? I may pull before I baked it all. I may pull the um, this plane up further and just catch like these top edges of them so that uh when i z remeshed it actually had some of these remnants uh, of geo that actually push off of it and then making sure that you don't change it uh from your high res mesh too much the location wise like this so that <coughs> when you bake it um 
your your low res mesh still captures some of this top geo, uh, but then the rest is baked into the uh, the surrounding. There's there's ways to do it for sure. <coughs> it just becomes about like, is it worth the time it takes to create to create that piece versus like the payoff. If it's a, a star piece, then yeah, you may want to do that. Um, but if it's kind of secondary, it may be way more work than the time that it takes to to do it, you know? All right, so we'll just kind of get this guy. Maybe he lives on top of this. That. Just come in, just move these pieces around. Again, this is all low, this is low res right now, so I'm not too worried about like having like these little peaks and stuff because uh, I'm gonna subdivide and sculpt it once the the general I idea is there. So I'm not too worried about it having these kind of like funky reggae parties right here. You know what I mean? Just do a quick. All right, so something like that. Cool. This one. <coughs> um, the the equivalent to that, Andrea. Uh, and I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, but forgive me if I'm not, because I slaughter people's names all the time. Uh, is that you can look at how <coughs> uh, the first God of War remake? Um, he's got like that that uh, that shoulder piece here with all the kind of intertwined leather, um, and that uh, had definitely had supporting geo uh, because you wanted to make sure that that kind of star piece uh, had really great presence. Um, so if you look at that piece, there's definitely Geo that uh, supports some of those those pieces. Definitely not all just material. But it's, you have to be very meticulous in how you uh, model it. Very meticulous. Because... Uh, your high res has to support it as well. Got back over. Maybe he's overlapping quite a bit here. I'll make sure that the tension is still correct. So this kind of curve still, it doesn't feel like there's tension. It should be, the tension point is from here to here so as straight of a line from one to the next as possible is the most believable okay that kind of works all right so the other thing i wanted to try was um some dynamics so i want to see if i can get <coughs> a piece of cloth to kind of fall hey, Xavier, um, over this and then I want to figure out some nice kind of mesh um, not mesh um, some rope mesh feels on top of that so let's do that real quick first we're going to save it save it Giant space hamster illithids is what we're working on. Okay, so I'm going to start with a, um, a plane. So I'm just going to grab a plane 3D. I'm going to grab this dude. I'm going to put him up into the location we want to use the dynamics on. So let's say we're sitting like this. 
All right, and let's put some uh, dynamic thickness on this one so we can kind of see what that thickness may feel like. Oh, and then let's just <laughs> let's just try it and see what it does. Uh, so we're gonna use dynamics. All right, first thing you need to do is um, set collision volume. So what that's gonna do is for everything that's not selected on this uh, subtool that you have selected, it's going to put all of that into memory that it is collidable. So if I come like this and then just do run simulation, right? That's what it's doing. Ooh. Let's 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 keep it running though. All right. So that's now we know what what to do, right? So let's maybe go like that, and then maybe we can. Do like that and run run. Then maybe we can let's use a brush move. No, sorry, it's a brush cloth move. The cloth slide. Cloth. Hey. Brush cloth move. Maybe what I'll do is I'll kind of in and kind of ease this look at that oh, love this part all right cloth move is taking into account the uh, when you set up the collision volume it's saying okay everything that's not this subtool I'm going to um, use as something to collide with so then anytime you move, you use the cloth move, it's going to do those same things. So maybe like, I want to like bring this up here, All right? Maybe it's going to live underneath one of those straps. But this, I love doing this because it's a really quick and easy way to get even just some cloth breakdown and shapes into there. And then you can go in and just Sculpt the rest, right? And it works really well because I have the dynamic on. I'm just using this single plane and using dynamic subdiv with the thickness so that I can, it, it stays consistent, which is great. So I'm just gonna kind of move all this stuff place this is great for like if you want to make capes or anything really um the key to this is i for, at least for me is to try to keep it as simple as possible don't go crazy overboard with trying to get uh like all the little folds and details and everything like that because you'll just it'll just it'll take forever so i'm already kind of getting into the weeds in here <coughs> So maybe what I'll do is um, I'll all right. So maybe we'll do run sim. Oh, here's another one you can do. All right. So if you want to do, uh, you're like you don't want it to go down. You can rotate it like this and say um, set direction. All right. So now it's gonna go. Gravity's gonna go this way to whatever way that you want it to. Look at that. Oh, snaps! Uh, let's maybe do... Uh, I'm also using space to stop the calculation. So I'm just kind of moving it a little bit. Alright, let's use a little more of those washed in there see what that looks like
You can also subdivide one time and get a little bit more. All right, so maybe maybe what I'll do is um, I'll have a rope that uh, goes and comes underneath here, and we got a little bit of the the blanket tarp thing, whatever this is, uh, that kind of flutters back here, kind of give a nice little silhouette break up in there. Like that feels actually pretty pretty cool. So maybe we'll see if we can just smooth this stuff out. I'm just using Alt Smooth, so uh, Shift, uh, and then let go of Shift when you're smoothing. See if we can correct this up a little bit. Maybe we'll undo the sub the um, dynamic there. And what's happening is you're getting a little bit of crossover here, which is why you're having some issues. What you could do is you can just <coughs> do something like that. Or if you want to be super slick about it, you can just maybe take this part and do polish by groups. Uh, polish by groups is in deformation polish by groups. Look at that. Ooh, get smart now. Uh, again, uh, shift C to at least on, on mine, to um, lock the camera. And I'm just going to try to pull some of these apart so that when it subdivides, it's actually a little bit cleaner in there. Alt smooth. And then let's go back to the subdiv. All right, so it's starting to clean it up a little bit in there. we got a little bit more to do. Let's undo the subdiv. Maybe go back to subdivision one. Let's just try to get these guys a little bit more even. Right, maybe what we'll do is we'll make sure that these are on the same plane. And not going all kinds of crazy different directions. Alright, so let's take that back up to there, add the subdiv again, and it's getting cleaner. All right, we'll do that with this guy over here too. So that, take off the subdiv, ooh, that's gross looking. That's nasty. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll grab that. Inverse it. Maybe once like that, and then we'll do um, polish by group. That'll kind of just ease that. And then use Alt Smooth. That'll kind of retain that overall volume uh, while seeing if it can get the, um, the vertexes in a more average manner. Right, so maybe what I'll let's see what that looks like. That could actually work. All right, so now what I can do? Let's let's see if I have that. Uh, should we use straps or ropes? Maybe we'll use this rope rope brush. <coughs> All right, so now. We'll make that a little bit smaller. Now let's we'll see if we can get this rolling around. Yeah, I think this is gonna work. That. Should have started from the bottom though. Dang a lang a rang a tang. Yeah, let me read let me read you this. 
So I want to start from somewhere where that crease is not going to be crazy. So maybe I'll actually start here. No, I'm going to start at the bottom. Starting here. Starting here. Okay, and then let's see if the brush will actually connect to itself. It's close. I think that's that's good enough. So I'm on the body right now. Okay, cool. All right, so then now what I want to do is I want to create the kind of this mesh work back here. So maybe there's a knot here, and then we've got one piece that goes over this way and ends there. I can maybe, uh, let's go to stroke real quick and make sure that both sides are on. Turn bend end on as well. That way we can just pull this guy out just a little. Ever so slightly. Okay, cool, that feels good. Right, and then we've got maybe one that comes from here. So this happens quite a bit where um, when you're going over something like this, uh, you get this type of feel. So what I'll what I usually do is I'll leave a little bit of room on either side that I can pull from each side. And a lot of times what that does is it starts evening out this curve. And then once I have pulled that from both sides a little bit, just to see if I can get everything nice and evened out, then I'll complete the rest of the length of the curve. Like that. And then if I need to do it again, I can. But uh, before before I finish the curve, um, I can see that that happened. What size is that? I don't even know. Uh, let's say twenty-two, maybe nineteen, twenty. All right, twenty. Twenty-one. There you go. Let's say let's say it's twenty one is the size. Uh, when I hover over this, you see how the um, reticle goes. That cyan. That just means it's the edit size. So if I go over it, or so if I leave it, it'll go back to the um, the draw size. But if I go here, so I have two different sizes that I can um, that I can use where I'm having the curve. So in this one, I'm just going to grab these parts and just pull them up off of that just to ease that curve just a little bit. Cool. All right, and then click off of off of that to <coughs> complete the curve. All right, so then now I maybe I have one that comes this way. Oh. So this is the the kind of the mesh rope that I was talking about that when I was thinking how I was going to do this. Ooh, that doesn't look good. So uh, I can redo it, or what I can do is I can pull from this side, and it should start resolving this from that side. And then it just gets all nasty and gross. So let's just redo it. There we go. That's a little better. <coughs> All 
All right, grab this side and pull it just a little bit. It's getting a little wonky do in here. These can definitely be futzy. So that's why I tend to try to keep the initial curve short on either side so that I can pull it from both sides. See if it can just figure itself out. Just nudge these curves a little bit straighter. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Hold on. <clears throat> okay, so that's that should be okay. Then we'll see if we can get another one this side here. Leave it just a little bit short. Pull it from one side. Pull it from the next. <clears throat> Maybe just add just one more little click there. Whoa, buddy, what are you doing? All right, let's just leave it like that. That's fine. All right, so then now we'll do, we'll let it save, and then we'll go from there. All right, so maybe it's, You know what's great about this too is I don't have to I don't have to make the low res of this. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Oops. It starts to get a little funky in there. See how it's kind of squashing. So there's sometimes um where I may create an under mesh uh so let's do this um what i'll do is you know what i want some of these to go in between as well let me think for a second let's redo this guy here this guy. I'm thinking whether, right now I'm thinking about whether I want these to, um, you know, when you're knotting these, does it come in like this, do a knot, and then come this way? Or... Is it just not here over everything, not here? And I think the, the more interesting thing would be is if these were all kind of interwe interwoved, interweaved, interwoven. So maybe the best way to do that would be <coughs> instead of going over each one of them, I can nice. <coughs> Let's take a look at this real quick. Let's do auto groups and let's just split those off. All right, so now they're not part of this auto this group that I'm using to draw on. So what I can do is um Maybe I'll actually draw on this one for now. So let's duplicate this guy. Turn that one off. 
and we will make this guy an actual mesh. All right, so he doesn't have any subdivisions. He doesn't have any dynamics on. <coughs> Excuse me. I can retain this version of it. I'm just going up and down in my um, subtools. So I can retain this version of it, which is the subdivided uh, and dynamic one. Uh, but if I go down to this one, um, I basically froze everything. And now I can use the insert uh, and brushes and stuff on this. So by doing that, I can, if I do uh, turn on ghost mode, like this is, uh, shoot, where is it? Uh, render? No, it's in transform. I don't know why it's in transform. But if you do transparency ghost, then you can still see what's there, but it doesn't take into account any of the calculations. So now what I can do is I can come in here and draw this guy again, and it won't calculate this intersection of the rope. It's only calculating what's on uh, my current subtool. I'm doing that because what I want to do is I want to uh, end up making a um, an insert brush for the knot, and then just throwing the insert in here and having all, like one cross, one cross, and then throw the the knot on top of it, and it makes look look like it's tied basically. So I'll just have them go through like that, which is fine. It actually works works good. So we'll keep the transparency on. Okay, cool, good, excellent. So we'll finish that, and then from there we'll do split unmasked. So then we can start again from that one. So now I can make this one here. All right, that's good. Maybe we'll that one down a little bit. Cool, that works. Oh, nope, shoot, uh, that was 21. That was 21. Okay. And then we can complete it. And then do split unmasked points. That one. All right, we'll just continue to do. Like so. That looks good. Complete it. Split unmasked. Way easier to do it this, this way. Let's grab this one. Let's redo this one. So we'll turn that one off. Go back to this one. So then if I was going to tie this, I would say it would go in between this. Uh, give me one second. Hi, bud. Kids are home, so it may be loud in the background. That's kids, though. All right. Get this. Shane, what's up, dude? How you doing, buddy? See what I'm working on? Oh, yeah. This is a... Dungeons and Dragons space hamster that's been taken over by uh, an illithid mind flare. Yes. So doing this for um, miniature printing. I'm printing these. I'm making eight different versions of this guy. And then going to print and paint them uh, for a client. Yeah, he's coming along. He's uh, still definitely in block out mode, but he's he's getting there. He's getting some character now. We've got uh, some things going on. So, oh, you know what we may want to do as well. How you been doing though, buddy? 
you guys don't know Shane, um, he is another streamer. Uh, does amazing, amazing stylized character art. You guys should all know Shane. Um, but I check him out, give him a follow. 3D Character Workshop is what he runs. Um, runs a great um, teaching site. Um, check it out. Yeah. So that's probably good for the, the overall core of this thing. So then what we'll do is, let's do split on last points again. And then what we want to do is like, how is this, uh, how is this being kind of strapulated to him? So we have this kind of harness that goes over his body, but now we need to like figure out, um, yeah, the small guy. This, um, this is actually by Flesh of Gods. I actually didn't do that guy. Uh, but that gives you, he's just for scale right now. And the amount of detail that I'm going to be going towards. So, yes. So maybe what it will do is we'll take and we'll do another one. That connects over here. Is that the way to do it? Something like that. Don't know if that will work. But that's what I'm thinking for the moment. So let's grab this guy. Go back to our dynamic version of him. Let's go back to brush, cloth, mm, cloth move, cloth move. And let's even get this in a little bit further just to close off that hole in there. And if we're gonna run something through this way, we wanna be able to have that nice and pinched in there too. Like that. So that way it's gonna, it'll close off that gap in there. They don't have to worry about um, modeling anything in there. I can just push that in later. It should be fine. Um, but let's see if we got this side of it. Shane, how was the um, Zebra Summit? You actually went this year, right? Missed out next year. Going next year. Let's get this, let's see if we can close this gap in here. And then we'll use kind of whatever strap that we move through there as explaining why that's kind of crimped in. Crimped in. What's the word? Crumped in? Crumpled in? Crumpled in. Okay, so something like that. Good fewer people than I thought, yeah. The first time back in a few years, I, I'm not surprised. Oh yeah, Noman is moving, right. When are they, um, when are they moving? It's gonna be weird not having the Zebra Summit there at that, at that location, you know? Pull this. This way. See if we can just kind of resolve some of these flowy shapes in here. There you go. Look at that. I'm telling you, cloth move is the way to go if you're trying to do um, some really nice rudimentary cloth folds very quickly. Great to see everybody else too. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so let's let's now grab so 
because we changed this one, let's actually, we don't need this guy anymore, so we'll delete him. And then we'll grab this guy, we'll duplicate him. And then we'll um, delete lower and apply so that this is now just a regular mesh that we can draw uh, on. So let's go back to 21. We'll go back to our rope brush. Ropes. And then maybe from the same location there, let's actually turn the side dude off real quick. Get out of here, side dude. Okay, so then we'll see if we can get this guy to come this way. All right, so we got this weird thing happening where there's not enough space in there. So typically what I'll do is if I'm running into that, I'm just, I, I will like just brute force it. Um, I'll take just any old shape. And then what I'll do is um, I'll just sculpt that into, into place to kind of cover that gap only for when I'm drawing that piece, right? So if I have something like this, right, and I come up like that, all I needed to do is, is to just Okay, 21. All right, let's go back to our rope brush. All right, so now when I draw through here, it takes that into account. Like that. Yeah, that one. And then I just, I don't need this one anymore. And now it just goes in the direction that I need it to. That's how you usually get across or get away, uh, get around that. So let's go back one. Turn that guy back on for a second. Then maybe we'll pull it this way. Or maybe, maybe he comes up to here. Maybe that's better if it comes up that one. More room up there, anyways. Cloth smooth, yeah. I gotta try that one too. I haven't. I have actually haven't used many of the cloth brushes, which is, which is, uh, sad. <laughs> All right, so maybe that, that works. Or maybe what I'll do is this comes from down here like this. Because we have like this kind of natural pull right here. Yeah, that feels good. I can do the same thing from this side too. All right, see if we can fix that little crumpy spot there you go yeah that works okay we'll do split on last points and then we'll sculpt this side of this brosif and I want it to up that He's going to pull, let's see, where is he going to pull from? Maybe pull from like right about there. Just going to should be good enough. All right, so we'll go back to size 21. Of Salvatore. Okay, and we we'll go back to our root brush. I'm 
something like that. Sorry, my my daughter's maybe a little bit loud out there today. Let's even get a, a decent curve through here too. I don't want it just straight. We want to have a little bit of life to that. Also doesn't curve up before holes taut. Okay. Should be good. Okay, we'll do split unmask, turn that off. All right, and then now we have, we can come in and do just general edits too. Say maybe this is a little too far. Add a, just a little bit more curvature in there. Hold on one second. All right, I had to pull the dad card real quick. All right, uh, let's see. All right, so now we need to... Um... Hi, Shane. Thanks for stopping by, dude. Good to see you. Thanks for dropping by. Hope everything is well. Take care. What's up, Tatoon? How you doing? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so let's see if we can make um, a knot real quick. And then that may be uh, it for today. Maybe grab these guys and kind of get them into a little bit better of a position. Any idea how to sculpt this in ZBrush? Yep, uh, go back and watch my first video and then watch this video again from the beginning. This is exactly how to do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, so let's let me think real quick. So what I want to do is I need some kind of curvature for the knot to be on. So the knot's got to be fairly big. So let's 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 see if we can do it. Um, let's go 
21. All right, so let's go on this. Let's try just this guy. So if we go from here, all right, nope, uh, I want rope brush. We go here to here. Here to there. See what that looks like. See if we can just Just get this into something resembling something like that. All right, and then maybe if we split unmasked, we take that and then we duplicate it. This one. Then maybe we do this. I don't know if that one's going to work. Maybe we'll have to draw a new. Let's. I'm just figuring this out as we're doing it too. That's the nice thing about <coughs> doing things live. Is that. You get to figure it out with me. Okay, so let's grab this guy and then now let's do rope again. See if we can go over that. Before we do that, well, why don't we grab this guy? Let's turn him this way. Then now when we do this one, he can go over like that. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we can fidget with it later. Just has to get the idea that it's a knot. That actually may that actually may work. We'll do split unmasked. All right, so we got this piece and this piece. Let's see if we'll get those into more uh, believable ends here without stretching things too much. Um, could do is, oh, you know what the other thing we could do instead of doing it this way? So let's try it this way first, see if that'll work. We'll say, all right, this is comes up like that, and then it comes over. We got this kind of nice height happening, and then all right, so we grab that, and then we merge that down like that. We say, okay, cool, that's my piece. Now I'm going to make an insert mesh brush. Say new. Now we can come in and just go, oh, I want to earn inset mesh brush right there. And we can say that one goes there like this. And now we've got knots. And one here. that or we could just take the same one since it's sized the same because if we drag it on there we don't necessarily know it's this size so instead of making it an insert brush we could just go um, 
make that all one poly group. This actually may be easy. We grab that guy, we move that there, and then we use the um, Control Alt Move, and that duplicates based on your um, poly group set. So that's that's one way of doing it uh to making the knot and the the part i don't like about this knot is that it doesn't curve under very well it just doesn't doesn't feel quite right All right so the other thing that i can do is instead of using um the curve brush to try to make the circle do this. So I'm going to draw it onto a flat plane first. <coughs> so grab this guy, just going to draw it on a flat plane. There go. That. I don't need it that long. So let's go maybe. One more. Maybe one. So I'm going to grab the end. I'm going to drag and then I'm going to hold shift to make sure that it's straight. And then we'll grab that. There you go. All right. So let's say I have that. Cool. Great. Now what I'm going to do with that. Uh, I'm going to isolate it, turn that off. All right, so now I have something that's straight. Now, instead of using the brush to do it, I'm going to actually use the bend curve function. Curve resolution, let's do that. All right, so now I can use bend curve. Oops, I'm going to hit Shift C to lock my camera to get this circle. Which actually may be way better. Maybe we need two more in there. So maybe we'll just make these little circle doodads. Yeah, bend curve is like for the win, man. Yeah, the anchor points are great too. Um, but I am not on 2023. Great reason to update though. That anchor brush is going to save, especially for um, <coughs> posing. Oh, man. Yes. All right, so we'll do accept. And then now I have have my rotate, uh, my, my rotate <laughs> the piece there. All right, so uh, we come in. Let's do um, that. And then we'll go this. And then we'll do um, control alt and control alt up to make a new one. And then we'll rotate like that. And then do something like that. All right, so then now there's my knot. It feels way better. Let's pull that up there. Right, let's turn those knots off. All right, and that's going to feel way better. All right, control alt drag. There we go. Go alt drag. OK. 
Okay. All right, so I've got to start wrapping up. You guys have any uh, last questions? Now's the time. All right, so that's the idea behind the knot. So I don't have to worry about the actual ropes intersecting and making real knots. I just kind of fake it like that. Yeah, the deformer uh, was uh, was key to that bad boy. Then I can actually, I can actually, actually. Uh, so let's duplicate this guy. Let's delete those ones. Before we do that, let's hide those guys. We'll delete those ones, uh, and then this is its own. <coughs> Let's put one here. Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. Uh, let's duplicate that guy. Put one over on this one. Where's the end? End is on that. All right. So we'll get. Uh, we'll put this one in into effect there I think we'll call it after this you get the idea here cool we make some good progress today um, I think we're going to wrap it there so this is the size comparison here um, <coughs> this dude is by um, Flesh of Gods which is great a miniature company that does monthly Patreon miniatures. Take a take a, a good look at those guys. They uh they um, make some amazing stuff. Flesh of Gods. Um, the next one will probably be next month on the Pixelogic channel. Um, so keep an eye on the um, Pixelogic schedule, or you can follow me on my personal channel. Uh, and I may be doing some work over there. So let me that into chat here real quick e forward slash brendan thanks let me spell it for you um also if you'd like uh, you can check out um thinker built studio website um been doing a lot of uh, commissions and painting of miniatures of all kinds um so that is www dot linker built studio dot com so take a look at us over there um and uh yeah that was fun uh so if you want to follow me on my personal channel i'm maybe doing some work over there um and we will s be back soon uh probably most definitely going to be doing more work on this guy between then and now so uh, keep an eye open. Awesome. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great one. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And hope you had fun. Hope you guys learned a couple of things. But most of all, I hope you were inspired to make your own cool stuff. Get out there. Make some cool stuff. That's what Brendan said. All right. See you, everybody. <laughs>